It's not common for the chief of CAL FIRE to get a phone call at 12.30 in the morning uh, from uh, leadership that, in the department that uh, here are the conditions we have. These fires were burning uh, at, at the speed of the length of one football field every minute, um, all night. This is my 30th year uh, in the fire service and the economic impact in these disastrous fires is going to rank among the top that I've ever seen. As soon as actually they allowed people to come up the mountain, um, I was here and uh, was in utter shock. It was way worse than I could have ever imagined. So this was the winery office, barrel room, guest, two other rooms, dining area. When you hear people say that, you know, they put their heart and soul into something, this was, this was, I work, and when I'm not working, I'm building on Sagasia. And um, I cared so much about this place. I do plan to rebuild. Um, this will be a process. My whole mindset, you know, I want to turn lemons into lemonade and I want to be positive, especially in um, situations of just dire circumstances. We were not able to get access to the property until the following day, and that's when the confirmation that both the winemaking facility and the uh, tasting room and event center burned. So this was a crushed pad that was processing grapes less than 10 days ago. And now we're kind of coming up to the you know, our main tasting room and event center, and it's 100% destroyed. This was kind of the heart and soul of, of what was happening, what we did up here in Paradise. The hope is, is that we can rebuild this and hopefully rebuild it fairly quickly. Our hope is that we can get this place up and running in the next, you know, less than two years is our hope, and that our winemaking facility hopefully would be ready to do the 2019 harvest in. So that's what we're hoping for. Probably a year and a half ago, I was, I was talking to, to you guys um, and I was hoping we'd be rebuilt in two years and it looks like we'll be rebuilt in about two years. We're starting to get excited about the building and starting to envision the furniture and the fixtures and everything that's going to go in there that's going to make it really special. It's been difficult, but it's something that, that we're proud of and there's a lot of people in our community that are happy we're rebuilding and we'll be back soon. And it'll, I feel like it'll be something that, that helps people heal. That's really what my parents wanted to do when they, when they built the winery, was share this beautiful spot that they had discovered with the community. A lot of people come up to the winery to enjoy our artwork and we have lots of sculptures here on the property. It was a very popular place before and, and we're anticipating it being even more popular because that was one of the silver linings is all this artwork that survived the fires. This love sculpture was a symbol of resilience because it survived and uh, you know, a lot of people think it's a little bit of a miracle that all of our artwork survived. I believe that, my dad believes that. Art is definitely healing, and I think, you know, um, even if it just takes your mind off of everything that people have to deal with in a day, just for five minutes to have that break, to enjoy something different. When we're completed and the winery's reopening and we're having some parties for people and our club members and the community, I really feel like people are going to kind of hopefully exhale a little and have it. It's never going to be completely behind us, but it'll be something that was happened, a bump in the road, and we're looking forward to this bright future and not, not dwell on the past and the, the, the devastation that our community suffered. For me, Sonoma Strong really is, a, is, is, is for our community to support each other, forge ahead, and build a better future for everybody. When I see Sonoma Strong, it's like, we've been knocked down, we're getting back up, and we're going to keep fighting to make it to the end. The rebuilding process has been extremely slow. I mean, to kind of take you back to what this was just a couple years ago, this was a organic, um, sustainable farm. My garden was, was all farm to table. Uh, I ate a lot of vegetables, had bees, chickens. It was a beautiful place, it was a sanctuary. 
a week before the fire hit was actually the scheduled harvest date for Sagacia. Sagacia's fruit in, in 2017 was actually rejected um, due to uh, what's called smoke taint, smoke damage. All this work, time, effort, expense, focus, love, passion uh, just goes away in a couple hours. When everything's been taken away and you have nothing to show for your efforts, your hard work, your passion, your love, it becomes very clear as to what's important. Smoke taint is nothing more than the winemaker rejecting the fruit, that this fruit's aromatics three, four, five years down the road could be compromised. The fruit itself was beautiful, still intact, hanging there. You know, we tasted it, we thought it was delicious. Fruit that was unsuitable for winemaking purposes because of this perceived smoke taint. We realized very quickly other people were probably in a similar situation. We reached out to the Food Recovery Network and told them what was going on in California. Through these conversations, we were able to enter into uh, the Rescue Raisin Project, where we were able to go back to Napa, work with laborers that had their harvest cut short. We put them back to work hand harvesting over 100 tons of Napa Valley Cabernet. What we've been able to do is take these hand harvested premium California wine grapes and put them through this process where we can actually caramelize and roast the seed inside the fruit and its own sugars, creating a new crunchy, superfood, antioxidant rich, crunchy raisin. Some varietals that we, we, we play with and some of our product lines include Cabernaisins, Chardonnaisins, and Merlaisins. The proceeds from the sale of each bag of raisins goes back to the Napa Valley Disaster Relief Fund as well as the Food Recovery Network. We did this because this is a way to turn lemons into lemonade. Um, there's no shortage of challenges that we as a family and Sagacia and the Wine Raisin Company has, has endured over the last couple years. But I can tell you this much, I'm lucky to be alive, I'm, I'm happy, I'm supposed to be here for a purpose, and I believe that's the Wine Raisin Company and creating this new company, this new superfood fruit that can help people. A great way of putting it is that grapes need stress to be their best. Um, I believe that, that that's a testament to pretty much everything.